Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck, and everyone, welcome to Friday Fretworks, and this week, the legendary BD2, the Boss Blues Driver. Now, there's not really a great deal left to be said about Boss Effects pedals that hasn't been said before ad nauseum. They are a true icon of the music industry. Odds on, if you picture a guitar effects pedal in your mind's eye, it'll have that distinctive enclosure, that foot switch, and of course, that thumb screw. And when it comes to overdrive and distortion pedals, the SD1 and the DS1 stand virtually alone, but they were all of them deceived, for another ring was made. Enter the perennial underdog that, unbelievably in only a few months' time, will celebrate its 30th birthday. Of course, talking about the BD-2, the blues driver. But this BD-2 was actually my first proper effects pedal. Funnily enough, my first actual effects pedal was a Digitech Screaming Blues, which, these days at least, the consensus seems to be online that it's pretty much a BD-2 clone, ironically. But rewind to about 2008 is when I first picked up the BD-2, at a point when I was first really starting to understand and appreciate the power of effects pedals. Prior to that, it had been a Les Paul into maybe a wah pedal, and then into a Marshall. And anything else, as far as I was concerned, was witchcraft. But when I first switched to using Stratocasters, I decided that a little bit more versatility was required than simply running a JCM 800 at full bore, and thus began a lifelong love and obsession with effects pedals and faffing around with pedal boards. And the BD-2 is undoubtedly the genesis of that relationship. For the longest time, it was on every pedal board that I put together and at the very core of my sound. A homemade Stratocaster parts caster that my dad put together, the BD-2, and my Marshall JCM 800. And funnily enough, it is that exact rig that you're going to hear in this Eons old clip taken from the Troubadour in London way back in 2009, circa around then, I guess, with the band that pretty much would go on to become Cardinal Black. Sounds a little bit like this. Now looking back, I can't actually recall why I bought the BD-2, although in hindsight it was more than likely due to its brief, albeit somewhat fabled, association with John Mayer. Rewind to about 2005 from the John Mayer trio, and there's actually quite a few photos showing the BD-2, albeit a Keeley modded one, on his pedal board, alongside the TS-808 Tube Screamer and the Keeley Katana, pedals that otherwise have been pretty much a mainstay in his rig. 
relatively speaking, the BD-2 didn't actually stick around all that long, and as such, there's no real conclusive evidence as to what he used it for, or even on. But of course, its association with John Mayer certainly didn't do his reputation any harm. Perhaps less notably, but infinitely more consistently and no less brilliantly, Andy Timmons is of course a long-time user of the BD-2, and in this next clip, explains beautifully what it is that he loves about the BD-2 so much. This is just blues driver into the front of the amp. Kind of going for the same tone, but it's a slightly different color, and I'll, I'll choose one or two depending on how it sounds that day. Now if you hear that tone with the guitar wide open... Pretty crunchy, but when I back down the volume of the guitar on the neck pickup, that's that's the special tone that I'm going for. It's kind of like, um, you know, kind of a JCM, JMP master volume amp. Where it's got a bit of gain on it, but you back the, the volume down, it cleans it up to give it a, a little bit more glassy sound. Which, in a nutshell, couldn't put it better myself, beautifully encapsulates the myriad reasons that the BD-2 has enjoyed such longevity and such success over the last three decades. Aside from its ubiquitousness, of course there is a reason that Prince pretty much exclusively used Boss pedals whilst on the road, it's dynamic and it's versatile and it's surprisingly amp-like, unlike say a Marshall Blues Breaker or an Ibanez Tube Screamer, which have such finely honed frequency ranges that they do kind of round the edges of your sound, for better or for worse, the BD-2 can be a little unwieldy. There's a fair amount of bass and there's a fair amount of treble as well that when you crank it really is reminiscent of the slightly unwieldy ungainly ragged distortion that you get when you crank say an actual deluxe reverb it's not particularly a, an even-handed cultured sound in overdrive there are the odd frequencies that leap out and catch you off guard but if you back the gain down slightly really is reminiscent of pushing say a blackface fender slightly to the edge of breakup it's a truly magnificent sounding pedal in that respect mm -hmm.
also is the blues driver an underappreciated, underutilized gem, or just another mass-produced pedal. Now, honestly, I've really enjoyed making this video, and having a chance to dig back in and really dial in a pedal that at one point in time virtually was my only pedal that I used. I think relative to more modern overdrives, or even older overdrives that people have become a little bit more familiar or au fait with in recent years, the Blues Driver probably could feel a little bit agricultural or unrefined. There's a fair amount of bass, as I said, it can feel a little bit boomy on occasion, and depending on what amp you're pairing it with, the treble could feel a little bit fizzy on occasion, but all things considered, first and foremost, it's price and, of course, it's ubiquitousness. They really are a brilliant design, even more so considering that it's soon to celebrate its 30th birthday and does kind of live in the shadow of the SD1 and DS1. All things considered, it is a truly remarkable piece of engineering, so if you've never checked one out, you could definitely do worse. Now, I'm going to play you out, but as ever, thank you very much for watching. I'm Chris Buck. This is Friday Fretworks. Please subscribe, hit the bell icon if you haven't already, and I shall see you next week for another episode of Friday Fretworks. Cheers, guys. Take care. See you soon.